Never dreamed it would go this long and far. I don't want to come back and say, look, all you have to do is just buy here and you make $16,000. You know, well, I didn't know I'd make $16,000 because that's what trend following, like the hokey pokey, is all about. All right, let's talk about the mystery charts and the methodology and action. And a follow up on a mystery chart, and that's a C L O V trade. That's the original trade there, recommended first on H28. I forget which day it triggered. I don't have the trades in here, but uh, last week we did the trades. If you want to look at that, you can find those on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Dave Landry. Anyway, you can see the big blue arrow was pointing higher on this. Notice the slope, obviously, of the 30 EMA, one of my favorite EMAs, if not the favorite EMA. Lots and lots of Landry light below. We did have one day with no Landry light. Landry light is just simply lows greater than the moving average for uptrends. And notice that this market did begin to accelerate higher before it pulled back and touched the moving average. And that finishes the pattern of a Landry light pullback. Now, keep in mind that I actually use a blank chart when I'm doing my scans and I run very loose parameter scans and go through roughly 2,000 stocks. It's probably more like 1,500 lately based on the volatility, maybe 12 to 1,500 stocks, but it could be upwards of 2,000 stocks. And if you add in all the sector analysis and then uh, some of the charts I go back over again, it, it does begin to get closer to that 2,000 number. But keep in mind, I'm, I'm, I used to say hitting the button like the right going for cocaine. Now I'm slapping that pedal. Uh, what's that um, speed metal, there's a speed metal drummer that's a really fast drummer. I can't think of his name right now. But anyway, I'm hitting that. I get a little pedal uh, that I hit and I have it programmed to where I just hit the pedal and I go through charts and I go back and forth in the charts like this. I will have to get a video of that one day. Entry was there. Stop was down here in the IPT, initial profit target, was up here. Now, one thing I've been showing here and, and I'm going to get to this in a lot more detail, again, with the, the TFM 10% system, is when you're, when you're following a trend-following system, there's going to be ups and downs. I know that's Captain Obvious, but when you tell people this, they, they look at you like you pooed your pants. <laughs> but when they're actually living through them, a lot of people give up. And the map is not the territory. The territory is the actual trading. We're like, oh, great. Hey, I just filed a day. In three or four days, I'm up $400. That's great. Well, a week or so later, now you're down $360 on the position. And by the way, that's on a hypothetical 100K account. I do take these trades in what I call my model account. Anyway, so you can see it was up 400 down 360 It was kind of like womp, womp. And a lot of people, I would imagine, gave up. I did talk to a few people that gave up on it. And uh, one guy that toughed it out told me that, oh, it seems like it took forever. Well, the, the what's amazing about it is it only took two weeks. And if you annualize this, and I forget the exact math, but I want to say it's like 600%. If you hit the I, just the IPT in a couple of weeks' time, and I think it was uh, – but counting weekends, it might have been a little longer, but I think it was only 14 trading days total. Anyway, so we did hit that IPT, and – at the IPT, you're up 2,000 because you're risking 2% on a 100K account, which is obviously $2,000, and that's if you're stopped out. And we, when you hit the initial profit target, you bank half of your profit. So you sell half of your share. So 2,000, excuse me, 2,000, my wife warned me. I was wolfing down a hamburger <laughs> before this, and she said, you're gonna you're gonna regret that during the show. And boy, I tell you, she was right. Uh, you know, before I had a wife, nobody told me these things. Anyway, so two percent, and that's it. Stopped out. Not a two percent stop. This one had a ridiculously high stop, like thirty percent. And a lot of people like I can't trade no thirty percent stop. It's like, well, you don't get no coke, like you said in Caddyshack. Anyway, when you hit that initial profit target. Again, you take half your shares off, and then you bring your stop up to break even. Even if that happens intraday, you bring your stop up to break even. Now, keep in mind that let's say a stock spikes higher, comes back in, and closes flat on the day. You would not actually adjust your stop on that because you didn't gain any ground. But anyway, we banked $1,000 on that, and now, barring overnight gaps, the worst we could do is break even. And I call that free rolling, and that's a name that Charlie Kirk gave me for that. All right, we have a mystery chart. Oh, just one other point here, getting back to the to the money management, 
in pure trend following, which you're going to see an example of in a minute with the TFM 10% system. And, and that's one reason I wanted to follow that with 100 shares on the queues, just for S and Gs mostly. But then it turned into this wonderful learning example. I know I'm a nerd, but I'm kind of excited about how it's all shaped out, especially since it's uh, you know it's up about sixteen thousand dollars, which is pretty nice too, which I never dreamed of. But with the pure trend following, your drawdowns are going to be abysmal, and your accuracy is going to suck, to put it mildly. If you're trading for swing to intermediate term, where you're taking that swing trade profit, hopefully it happens on kind of a swing trade basis over a few days, a few weeks. And you're getting that stop at the break even and taking those partial profits, even if it's just half the shares you began with, because we, we're going in with a fairly big size. 2% is plenty, and especially when you take, it, it gets better when you take that 1% off or half that position off, okay? And then your drawdowns aren't quite as bad. And if you're getting in a lower price stock like this and you catch a, a major bottom, Something like like if you back this chart way out, we're just kind of getting started coming off the lows and like ARLP a while back. Is it Jeff that's still long that? That one was was coming off a of base and that thing just went up tremendous amount. I think at one point it was maybe up 500 percent. And once once you get those kind of crazy gains, which believe me, it doesn't happen often. If it happened more often, you probably never see my fat ass again. But this those are the ones we live for, right? But if it if that's where the real money is. And then believe me, half of those shares, especially with a lower price issue, when you're putting on a lot of shares and it, and it becomes a higher price issue, it, it can really, 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 really pay off. And 2% seems to be a sweet spot. If you get any bigger than that, it starts getting kind of ugly fast. And believe me, at 2%, you can get in a lot of trouble fast. And the drawdowns are plenty deep enough at 2%. All right, let's get back to that mystery chart reveal. And it was CSLR. Here is the trade. And getting back to the CLOV, yeah, 33% stop. And a lot of people have trouble with that. It's like, well, hang on. We're going to adjust our share size down accordingly. In this spreadsheet, I'll give you a blank version if you want. And I think I keep forgetting if it's not if it's behind a firewall now, but it's or not, but it's daylander.com slash member dash resources, I think. And you could get a copy of the spreadsheet, a blank one, obviously. And all you need to figure out is your entry and your protective stop, and then the IPT, the risk, and the share size per your account size, which you could put in here. And your risk, if you want to do that, is all calculated for you. By the way, if you are new to trading or new to my methodology and you want to become successful, Start off with like a quarter of a percent, such a small size where it's nearly meaningless to you and see if you could follow it for six months. And if you do, and I would hope and, and believe me, you could go fairly long periods of time. The flat times could be abysmal, too, you know, with trend trading it could really be painful. And sometimes we're not doing anything like I'll go two or three weeks, sometimes even longer. I forget what my record was, but I think it was like 40 days or 50 days without a, a new trigger. Had setups during that period, but a lot of them didn't trigger. And the market, if you go back and look, was super choppy. And if I could ever find that, I have to try to find those that period of time. You can just probably look at the market and figure it out. But anyway, a lot of waiting and trend trading. But if you could do this for, let's say, six or eight months at a very small size and you're successful, either picking your own stocks or using my stock picks in my Landry list, then maybe bump to a half a percent. But oh, always go up a little and never up and down and up and down and up and down. You'll never become consistent. And get your reps in and get used to everything, and you'll do really fine. And I have a lot of people, it's a revolving door, and I don't know what I can do to fix that. Maybe my onboarding needs to be better or something. I, you know, I, don't, I don't sit around studying all these things as much as I should. I'm more interested in looking at the markets and seeing what's happening and trading than figuring out onboarding for clients, so to speak. But uh, and if there's anything you ever need, just please contact me and I'll try to get better at that. But that's one thing that Facebook, I'm getting a little sidetracked here, obviously. That's one thing that Facebook group provides is a way for us to kind of help each other out. A lot of times somebody will ask a question. By the time I get around to answering it or see it, one or the other, somebody's already answered it and uh, answered it correctly, I, I must say. I must say, is that Morton Short? Not a fan. <laughs> anyway, so that's the parameters down there for the OS. And you can see it was, uh, it had lots and lots and lots of Landry Line. I'm sorry, the CSLR. 
lots of Landry light, and it began to accelerate higher. So we had about 40 bars where it never touched the 30 EMA. And this down here is not magnitude, but simply number of days of Landry light. And a nice, again, uptrend, it pulls back to the moving average. When this happens, the Landry light goes to zero. And as I was I started to say earlier, I don't actually scan for a Landry light pullback. I'm just looking at blank charts. But this is a great type of scan if you want to scan for pullbacks. And then on the members resources page, I also have my scans, which are very loose parameter scans. And that's why it produces so many charts. And I I, I think it's a it's a wonderful exercise to go through all those charts every night. You really get a feel for the market, what's happening, what's working, and what's not. Uh, right now, I'm seeing a lot of choppy action, unfortunately. And we'll get to that in one second. But a lot of areas are improving, too. So there's the parameters. The entry would be here. The stop was down here. And the initial product for target was up here. Now, keep in mind that this is what happened after uh, several days of no entry, okay? And if you notice, it, it pulled all the way back to where it broke out from. So once it gets that far down, especially if you have like a prior base or something, it might still be in an uptrend. It might still go higher, but it no longer really fits my methodology. So when it doesn't trigger like that and it comes back to a base, again, no capital is put into harm's way. And I know I say this every week, but six months from now, somebody's going to ask me, what do I do with CSLR? It's 40 cents a share. I'm like, 40 cents a share, CLSR, what, is, what the hell is that? I'd never recommend a stock that's 40 cents a share and going straight down for months. It's like, yes, you did way back in October. I'm like, okay, you know, let me go look. I'm like, oh yeah, it never triggered. Okay, well, what do I do with it? Well, <laughs> should I own your stop, unfortunately? <laughs> I know it sounds harsh, but, you know, I know early on in my career, I was kind of like, oh, it'll all be okay and kind of fluffy and mamby-pamby. And now that I'm getting older and crankier, I'm finding myself just saying, just do it, okay? Don't, <laughs> you know, giving people a little tough love. And if you want tough love, I'll give it to you. And you're going to become a trader so much faster with that tough love. Believe me. I need to give myself a little tough love. And I'll get to that in one second. Anyway, that's the parameters. Now, you can see the share size much smaller, 500 shares, because we're risking four points. Four points on a 100K account at 2% comes to 500 shares. Entry 3350, protective stop 2950, IPT, initial profit target 3750. So the entry was there, stop was down here, and the IPT was here. Let's take a look at what happened. Well, this stock just imploded and never triggered. Now, I guarantee you, uh, when this thing gets down to five or six dollars a share, gonna get that same email again. Hey, Dave, what the hell do I do with that turd you recommended? <laughs> I need to find some new material, but it's so funny. The same things just happen over and over and over and over again. So once again, no capital was put into harm's way. Now let's do a brief update on TFM 10% system real quick. And I've done plenty of webinars where I talked about the, the genesis of this system, the designer's intent, so to speak. And the designer's intent was to avoid, as Ian McActivy, God bless his soul, love Ian. He was wonderful. Uh, one of the best presenters ever. I wish I could find some old videos of him so I could borrow from his presentations, some of his ideas. But anyway, uh, the idea is to avoid these diaper change moments, as Ian McActivy used to call them. And my thinking is just going back to technical analysis 101, which by the way is 99% of what I do is technical analysis 101, is that if a market is gonna drop 50% or lose half its value, however you wanna look at it, it's gonna lose 10% of its value first. And for an index, that's a pretty good round number. And I have found in historical testing and then five years at least, I would think, if anybody knows when, they, when I first put this out, or made this public, let me know. But in five years of having this uh, made public, it's it's also avoided some really nasty spills. But the point I was getting to is that you would have avoided every bear market in history. It'd be some whipsaw here and there, don't get me wrong. But you would have avoided every bear market in history by following this silly little system. 
Now, the zones in here were inspired by Jeff, who is here tonight. And the green zone is less than 5% away from the 50-week closing high. The pink zone is 5% or more away, or 5 to 10%, if you want to look at it like that, for the 50-week closing high. And then the hot pink zone down here means you're 10% or more away from the 50-week closing high. I added in, you could run the system with just 10%. But I decided to add in a whipsaw filter vis-a-vis -vis the 50 day the 50 week simple moving average. And by the way, this is a weekly chart. Uh, one more other, by the way, too. Somebody was programming this system and they had like back-to-back -back sell signals. And I thought at first they were using a daily. This was on Twitter. I was working with somebody on Twitter, uh, our X now. And I thought they were using a daily chart because of all the signals, but what, what it was, was they would have like a sell signal and then a repeat sell signal a few weeks later, and they were showing that too, which is fine, but technically your your first sell signal is where you want to get out, and then after a buy signal, then you could have another sell signal, so it's buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, and so on and so forth. Anyway, so 50-week simple moving average, I'm using that for my whipsaw filter. It has to close below that and 10% or more away from the 50-week closing high. And that was the sell signal there. Unfortunately, it turned out to be a whipsaw and the market went back up. Uh, it happens, or I probably already demonetized anyway. Shit happens. <laughs> the buys are a little more stringent. You need two bars of Landry Light. I said I wouldn't go through all the details, but I did it anyway. <laughs> I just saved myself a half a dozen emails. Anyway, so that was the last buy in the P's. You can see that's been a pretty good run. The sell would be below that 50 again and 10%, below 10%. Now, if that 50 gets above the 10% line, which is getting fairly close, let me back this out to doing, I'm, I'm pointing at my screen. <laughs> if it gets below, if it gets above the 10% line, like this is the 10% line, here's your 50 week moving average that crosses above it you would still have to close below that 10%, okay? So just the opposite sort of happening now. If you close below 10%, you would still have to also close below the 50-week moving average. So we're looking at 52.12 and then 51-something uh, down here. I can't read, it's too small. <laughs> but you get the idea. These are fairly close, so that's the sell signal is gonna be fairly close together. But sometimes one will stretch away from the other but it has to close below both to exit. Now, it's kind of cool, and I know I'm a nerd, and I'm wondering if there's something here, maybe a little fodder for some more research, but notice that our zones are starting to move higher again, okay? So when you hit a 50-week closing high, the zones go up, and the zones don't go up again until you hit another 50-week closing high. Now, there's a lot of lag that's sort of built into the system on purpose, and that was part of designer's intent too. I wanted a somewhat longer term system that wouldn't be in and out, in and out, in and out like the rat going for the cocaine, okay? But have enough, but rather have enough lag in it so you're not chasing your tail so much. So you get out of the market and you're not right back in it the next week, okay? So it takes a little time to, to, to reset. Now in a longer term bear market, or if a market fails to make new 52 week highs for a while after, I'm sorry, 50 week highs, after a while, 50 weeks, obviously, then those zones began to drop as they did back here. And this made for a wonderful setup in the queues, which I'll show you in just one second. The queues sold off for a while and the zones came down to meet the price. And that got us in really early. And it was a really awesome trade. And again, I'm gonna show you that in just one minute. But getting back to the zones, the zones are going higher. So I'm wondering if there's fodder for research here. You know, when the zones are rising, you want to be long. When the zones are falling, you want to be short. I don't know, just a thought. Anywho, uh, NASDAQ Composite, you can see we had two bars of Landry Light above the 50-week moving average. And we closed within 10% of the 50-week closing high. So we could actually close way down here as long as you have Landry Light as long as you're not closing 10% or more away from the 50-week closing high, you're getting close to that closing high, okay, within 10%, and two bars of Landry like two lows greater than moving average. That's also like the 220 EMA breakout system. You can Google that, and you can search for it on the website. I'm sure I, I have it somewhere on my website. 
So that was my entry there, 319.49. And then the stop would be, right now it's at the 50-week moving average, which is, looks like 440.97. And then the top, or the bottom of the zone, I should say, 10% line, okay, is 445.92, uh, looks like. So it, it would have to close below both to trigger a sell signal. Now, one thing I'm noticing here, which is pretty cool, I noticed earlier when I, when I grabbed this chart, is even though on a on a daily basis the Nasdaq looks like a big picture retrace, meaning that it looks kind of like it could be double topish unless it gets bust out right past a prior peak. It doesn't look quite as bad on the weekly chart. It actually looks a little bit more bullish. Now, obviously, you still have to make new 50-week closing highs, which I can't read on this chart, but it's probably like uh, 4.99 or something like that. So I'd like to see, obviously, that happen, especially since I'm long 100 shares. Now, as I've been saying, again, there's your sell right there. So here's the, let me just rewind that. So there's your sell right here, again, below the 50-week moving average and below 10% of the 50-week closing high, okay? Now, if I did a mark to market earlier today, I don't know if the queues ended much higher than that or where they ended, but 493.44 is where I grabbed it, minus 319.49. That's 174 points, 55%. When I put this trade on, I'm like, eh, let's just see what happens. This is SG. Who cares? It's 100 shares. What difference does it make? Okay. And all of a sudden, it's like, wow, this thing turned into real money. Now, you can see uh, with 100 shares, again, uh, and I don't have any money management. This is just a pure system, okay? But it does show a lot of the nuances of a pure trend-following system. But it also shows proof of concept that trend following can work. And by the way, what I was alluding to earlier was when I got into this thing, I never dreamed I'd have 170 something points of profit, a 55% move from a, from an index trade, right? I mean, 10% of an index is a huge move, but 55% that's a that's a huge as uh, Trump would say, right? But anyway, that's been a really 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 good run and when you get the point, here comes the point. It's there, believe me. The point is with with trend following you don't know how far a market is going to go, and you don't know long. You don't know how long that's going to take, but you don't care. You're a trend following moron, and believe me, I used to try to outsmart the markets. I became a trend following moron. I didn't know I was a trend following moron. I just started following the trends until a famous trader called me a trend following moron, and he wasn't nice about it. And initially, he was really nice to me, and 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 he sent a lot of love my way, and I and kind of a long story. I, 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 it's about four or five pages. I've got it all written up in a book that I might publish someday. <laughs> Work on a, I'm always working on this book and it's just going to be this, uh, I forget what they call it. What do they call it? Your greatest work or whatever. Something opus, whatever. With trend following, you don't know how far it's going to go and you don't know how long it's going to take. And, and as long as you're trading with the trend, you know that there's a good chance the trend will continue, but obviously it could reverse on you at any moment. Now, what used to kill me was back many, many years ago in the, in the mid 90s, early to mid 90s, I was previously a CTA, commodity trading advisor. And I probably didn't have to be registered for the role that I was in, but I just thought I would get registered and all. I haven't been a CTA in, in 20 years, probably. Anyway, I, I advised this hedge fund for 14 years. and he traded options and so he was like what do you think the market's going to do i'm like well it looks like it's going higher well how high is it going to go it's like i don't know four points okay well how long is it going to take it to go four points i'm like oh geez it's just it's it, to trade options you need to know the answers to all these questions the point i'm getting to is if you're a trend follower you don't have to know all the answers to all these questions you just have to follow along and believe me it's easier said than done like last week in the presentation somebody had gotten out of a of clov okay at at a at, at its low at at, at, a, at a sizable not a sizable loss but at a loss compared to where it is now obviously below three dollars a share 
and then it obviously ran about four. And the reason they got out was because they had sat on it for a couple of weeks, right? And and nothing happened, and they were actually at a small loss, and they needed money for something else. And they took it out of that account, and and they they got out of the trade. So it's a lot harder than it looks, but it, it's like I, I probably shouldn't tell people say, hey, you gotta stop telling people it's hard. Nobody's ever gonna want to do this. Well, it is hard, okay? You could make it easy by by just do it. Just follow along, okay? And just say, what do I have to do? Nothing, okay? Then do nothing. But as Mr. Ken Lambert once said, doing nothing is harder than it looks, especially if you are educated and motivated. Again, I got long here, and I never dreamed it would really take off like it did. I'm like, well, let's just see what happens. And then you can see it had a really, really nice run, and then all of a sudden, it starts drawing down. I'm like, oh, shoot. Now, I was up about six grand here, and then I drew down $4,400 and change. It's like, well, hang on. I just gave up 80% of my gains over a short period of time, and if it would have stopped out, I would have ended up giving up 100% of my gains, and maybe and then some. So trend following, especially a pure system like this, can be pretty tough, and I know I pick on the turtles a lot. What the turtles did was nothing short of amazing and a lot of people try to piggyback off their success but unfortunately it ended badly for most of them okay and i don't want to get into that i've seen a lot of forums out there over the years talking about the turtles and everything but what they did when they did it was nothing short of amazing they also happened to be in the right place at the right time and if you read curtis face books on that the way of the turtle i think is his I would, I would, I would never throw anybody at the bus, but don't read a turtle book that wasn't written by a turtle. <laughs> okay, that's what I would suggest, and that's just that's just the way I see things. But Curtis Faith, he was a turtle. He also wrote Trading from the Gut, which I need to reread because that's a great little book to read. If you go to davelandercom slash books dash two dash read, and I think there's plenty of links down below. You can get a list of the books that I recommend. But uh, read Curtis Faith's books. But anyway, Curtis Faith said that halfway through the program they realized that they were risking way too much so they could have easily blown up halfway through the program and a lot of the other a lot of the traders from the program went on to blow up later unfortunately i'm not gonna be i'm not shot in friday believe me but it just it happens right but anyway if you look at some of the drawdowns here there's another 3600 and this one hurt a little bit okay Again, this all started with like, eh, let's just see what happens. I'll throw, you know, put my money where my mouth is. It looks like it works in the queues. I went back and did some back testing real quick. I said, eh, it looks pretty good to queues. Queues were set up as a buy. So I went ahead and bought in. Never dreamed it would go this long and far. I don't want to come back and say, look, all you have to do is just buy here and you make $16,000. You know, well, I didn't know I'd make $16,000 because that's what trend following, like the hokey pokey, is all about. You just follow along, right? And again, there's no money management in this to mitigate these drawdowns. Maybe uh, at some point I should put a little money management in, but for now, I just want to keep this a pure system and see what happens. Drawdowns and all, warts and all, right? So that was pretty ugly, but fortunately, it's come back quite a bit, and we're almost to a new equity high on this. All right, any questions on anything thus far? Okay, thought it'd be kind of cool tonight. I'm a nerd to show you something that a guru has never shown you, should be you and not your, has never shown your, sound like a uh, Medea. <laughs> so I'm trying to think, this was, I don't remember this one. I think this is when I got into one of the shows and said I would follow up on it. I thought it was more recent, but you can see I got in on 26. And I think it was during the show and it just looked like it was breaking out, going to the moon. And then it came right back in. Now. I don't trade breakouts, except again, as I beat the dead horse on, occasionally in IPOs and in the shit coins when they're really moving. Right now, they're not really kind of going crazy, but a few of them are moving here and there. You know, we'll take a look at those in one second. But because this breakout wasn't working, I decided to bail out, and it cost me about 100 bucks. So I know I've showed you some recent trades lately, any shit coins where they all seem to work out. And I showed you how I'd mined off some Bitcoin from the trades. Go back in and look at the playlist on YouTube. But here's one that 
flat out didn't work. So I want to show you that sometimes it doesn't work, okay? So it's a losing trade, something a guru, other than me, has never shown you. Okay, one of my side projects that I restarted, I think end of May, was a Landry 100. And it's 100 slots, so to speak. Cash is treated as an asset class. So if I can't find 100 stocks, then uh, the slots are filled up with cash. This is a hype. This is all hypothetical, although I am tracking it in real time. So today I took a couple of them out. I can't remember which ones. I can look at the spreadsheet and see. But, and then I added a couple of new ones in. Anyway, the proof of concepts, and, and I did this years ago. And, and I wish I'd have kept up with it, but I think what happened, the market got really, really choppy, and then they discontinued the software I was using to track it. And I still don't have tracking software on this. So what I'm doing is every time I close a trade out, I throw it into a spreadsheet. I don't have money management per se. There's no stops on any of this. But what I do is as markets begin to weaken, even if they're up 150%, they start weakening, I don't ride, I ride them all the way back down. I will get out of the position. And a lot of times, at least lately, since the market overall has done okay, I'm going to see a lot of choppy action here, a lot of questionable areas too, in just a few minutes. But overall, the market's done fairly well. So I've had plenty enough stocks to go in, enough so to where if I really, really like some stocks and I think they should be in the list, okay, then I'll knock some of the weaker stocks out. So this is all performance-based. As I said before, run your stock portfolio like you would your fantasy football team, okay? You're not gonna draft, or whatever they call it, the worst player in the NFL, okay, to put on your fantasy football team, you're gonna pick the best, right? So run your portfolio in the same way. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. In order to go into the list, right now I have it set for a 50-week closing high. I do remember in the past, because I couldn't find enough stocks at 50-week closing highs, I'm sorry, 52-week closing highs for this. So what I had to do was go down a little bit, a little further down to like 90-day closing highs or maybe even lower than that. But anyway, right now I'm right at 52-week closing highs and I can give you the formula it's literally that big and this is how I pick the stocks I sort them by historical volatility 50-day historical volatility and I tend to pick the more volatile stocks first as I go down a list provided they have a little structure and not like a ton of overhead resistance further back and a lot of the things that I do in stock picking although I am a little bit more liberal with this list because I just want to get the hot stocks in here and not judge them too much. And, and it's just a tremendous amount of benefits from doing this every day, even though it's, I'm not gonna say a lot of work, it's just more work piled on everything else I do. But I get to see where the money is flowing. Uh, I think I might've added back, I kicked out some gold stocks not long ago, and I think today I might've added back a couple because some gold stocks began taking off a little bit today. Some silver stocks woke up today. And it really alerts me to all these things. and so. The SMCIs and the NVIDIAs, the future ones that is, should pop up and be in this list. So at least they're on my radar. So I get to see where the money's flowing. I get to see what sectors are hot and so on and so forth. And I found an old presentation somewhere on my website. I'll have to look for it again. You might just be able to type in Landry 100 where I took a, a 3D model of uh, like a, a, what do you call that? Like a pie chart of all the sectors and all. And I thought that was pretty cool, but I really don't have a lot of software to, to do these things that I used to do anymore. It's a shame that software is kind of going backwards a little bit from where it was. But here's the list. And like I said, in weeks prior, all of these stocks were brought at, bought at brand new highs. And this one's up 92%. I think they had one recently stopped at like 150%, stopped at, I pulled it out at 150%, but it ran over 200%. I don't have, again, any money management in this because it's kind of like a proof of concept thing. But what I've kind of toyed with the idea of doing is um, maybe at 100% take off half of the position. But you can see those numbers are pretty good. And in the next chart, I have them sorted by percentage gains. But you can see the oldest one in here is from June, okay? So I started this thing 
again, I think it was in late May, and all the ones from May have been kicked out, and now we only have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five are left over from June. But look at these numbers. These are pretty good numbers, and annualized, they're ridiculous, right? 40%, 30%, 49%, 21%, and so on and so forth, okay? You got one losing here from August, and it's only at 2% on the loss, and I think it just, it kind of pulled back a little bit. It still looks pretty good. In fact, speaking of pullbacks, you can see this was added on this day here, okay? Right there, brand new highs. So I added it in. And then what did it do immediately? It immediately began to implode a little bit. Now, if you were just going out there and buying two or three stocks that are making new highs, you'd probably do a lot better than buying lows, right? But I would recommend that if you were to do something like this, you need a, a sizable portfolio. And this morning I woke up thinking, how big does that have to be? And I don't have the answer to that, okay? With 100 stocks, that's plenty big enough. Could I do it with 50 or 25? Maybe, you know, because I someday, if I, I would, I know, knowing me, if I keep watching this thing do what, it, what it's doing, eventually I'm going to want to figure out a way to, to do this for real. Because it is a pretty easy way to to run a momentum portfolio. Maybe in my next life I'll do that. But anyway, from where we got in this, where the Landry 100 got into it to today, it's up 92%, 93% or so. Now, again, these are sorted by tracking date. And so you can see the oldest is uh, June 6th. And there's only a few left from June. So the, the stronger ones will stay in. 